Arden back with another Road to 2200 uh, rapid rating video. Uh, I am going into game 11. I'm currently sitting with an 8, 2, and 0 record after 10 games. 8 wins, 2 draws, and 0 losses. Uh, and let's just jump right into this game. Uh, so I'm playing a 21, 21. Uh, and uh, as you can see, my rating is 21, 39. Uh, so let's just jump right in. We got pawn to d4, pawn c6, c4, e6. Uh, so this is hinting that my opponent is going to play d5, uh, but does not want to play it right away and go into some sort of Slav. Maybe a, a, maybe he's trying to avoid the exchange Slav. Uh, so he's playing c6 and e6 first, and then playing d5, and then I go e3. Uh, just looking to recapture on c4 uh, if black chooses to take on c4. Uh, so pretty standard stuff so far, knight f6, knight c3, bishop to d6, and then I go queen to c2, just developing the queen, looking to uh, kind of delay the development of this bishop on f1 in the case uh, of bishop e2 or bishop d3, black can potentially take on c4, make me waste another move to take back on c4 with the bishop, and then play b5 uh, with tempo, uh, so I play queen to c2 to avoid that black castles i play pawn to b3 just looking to play bishop b2 uh bishop e2 in the castle just play really uh normal solid moves uh b3 also reinforces c4 so uh rook to e8 is played uh bishop to b2 knight bd7 uh black is gearing up to play pawn to e5 and strike back in the center i play bishop to e2 pawn to e5 i take on e5 knight takes e5 and i take on d5 uh so after c takes d5 the reason I played c takes d5 is because I want to give black an isolated pawn. Notice that this pawn does not have any pawns on either side of it, so it is a little bit weak. Uh, it's called an isolated queen pawn. I castle. Black goes h6. Not super sure what that move is doing, but uh, could be a useful move in the long term. Uh, might also just be a waiting move, seeing what I do. Uh, and I go knight to b5. So I'm threatening to take the bishop uh, and get the bishop pair. Uh, I'm also looking to maybe play knight back to d4 and then uh, just have really uh, a solid control of this position, a uh, solid grip on this d4 square, which is usually a good thing. Uh, you want good control of the square in front of an isolated queen pawn. Uh, and this, with knight b5, that's what I'm doing. Black goes bishop to b8. I go rook to c1. Knight takes f3. Bishop takes f3 uh, and a6. And I played this move way too quickly. Uh, I realized immediately after... Uh, that I have knight c7 here, but I played knight d4. And as soon as, as you can see, I, I've spent two seconds on it. Uh, but this is a critical idea of this knight b5 move as well. Uh, knight c7 would be a very, very pleasant move for me to play. After queen takes c7, uh, if we get this end game, uh, this is going to be very pleasant for white. Uh, having the two bishops, black has an isolated queen pawn, uh, I've got the rook uh, down the c file, and it really, you know, I have all of the benefits in this position uh, but instead after uh, a6 i went knight to d4 way too quickly uh, it's rare that i make moves too quickly normally i spend way too much time but uh, this was one of those cases black goes bishop to g4 and i take on g4 and after knight takes g4 i went knight back to f3 uh, so i'm clearing this diagonal and also defending this pawn on h2 Black goes queen d6 to threaten knight takes h2, uh, or renew the threat of that. I go g3 to blunt this diagonal. Knight goes back to f6. I think now black wants to go knight e4 in this case, and I go queen to c3. This might be a slight inaccuracy, because uh, my queen is a pretty good piece on c2. Uh, something better might have been queen f5, uh, just placing the queen on a more active square, but... Queen c3 stops knight e4, because if knight e4 is played, queen to queen takes g7 is checkmate. So queen c3 does have an idea. And black goes b5. Now here, I should probably bring a rook to the center, rook fd1. Uh, maybe try and trade queens right away, but I played uh, pawn to b4 here, just trying to uh, shut down the queen side maybe play queen c7 at the right time or queen c or uh queen c6 queen c5 something like that 
uh, but really just lock up the queen side and make sure uh, that black cannot uh, gain any more space on the queen side. So black goes bishop to a7, uh, putting the bishop on a better square and also freeing up this rook potentially. And I go queen to c7 looking for a queen trade. Uh, so he is a weak d5 pawn, weak queen pawn. Uh, so I want to trade pieces because uh, that's going to benefit me uh, in the long term. He goes queen to e7, which is a mistake because I can take and then take on f6. Give up my bishop for his knight, uh, but I double his pawns, and now he has really, really bad pawns. He's got uh, an isolated uh, queen pawn right here. He's got double isolated pawns here, and he's got an isolated pawn here. So uh, my position is much, much better. I've got control of the c file and the better pawn structure, so I should have a nice advantage here. I play rook c6, target this pawn on f6, rook e6, and I bring the other rook into the game. So I've got a very strong position here. King g7 is a bit of a mistake here. Uh, if I think something better uh, that I could have done here would probably be to just take, and after f takes e6, play rook c6 with the fork. That probably would have been the best thing to do here. But unfortunately, uh, I went knight to h4, uh, looking to play knight f5 check, which isn't a terrible move. Uh, but after pawn to d4 here, uh, I make a mistake. I should really just take this pawn. Because if I take that pawn, uh, black cannot take back because this is going to be a fork. So it's really just a free pawn uh, if e takes d4 is played. But instead, I played knight f5 first, uh, which is a mistake. King to g6 is played, and then I just take this pawn, which is uh, not the best way to play. Because after bishop takes d4, uh, rook takes e6, f takes e6, e takes d4. Uh, this is going to be a relatively equal rook endgame. It's going to be very hard for me to win this. He goes rook d8, rook c6, king f5. Uh, I'm getting low on time here, so that also was not helping my situation. Rook takes a6, rook takes d4, I go a4, rook takes b4, and I go rook a5 to pin this pawn. And then after rook takes a4, rook takes b5, this should just be a dead drawn position. Uh, but we shuffle around for a little while. Uh, he's trying to flag me because I'm low on time. And then I actually end up getting to a position where I'm better. Uh, and I really uh, kind of mess this up coming up. So rook g8, king to d5. And I've actually got a position where I'm better here. Uh, I played rook to g5. Apparently the winning move is to go rook to g6. And I'm not entirely sure why. I think if king to e4, then I go rook g5. I think the idea is to stop the king from coming back any further uh, and make... He's almost in Zugzwang. So, like, if he moves his rook back, then I get this check, take the pawn. And if he moves, moves his king further uh, up the board, then his king is further away, and then rook g5, and then the king and pawn ending would be winning. Uh, so he'd have to move his rook, and I take this pawn on h5, and then I just win another pawn. Uh, so that would have been a huge uh, difference than the game. Uh, king d4 was played, or sorry, um, in the game we had uh, rook to g5, he goes king e6, I give a check, king goes back, uh, apparently rook g8 is still winning here for me, or much better, uh, but I went rook g5, king e6, and then I take here, and then I totally blew this position, I went pawn to f3, I was thinking for a while, and I was kind of concerned that if I move the king, I'm losing, uh, so I kind of assumed I was losing regardless. Uh, so I played f3, which is also losing after e3, uh, and I'm just going to be losing in this position. Uh, but I also like had zero time on my clock, uh, so I was probably going to lose this game regardless. He was probably going to flag me. Uh, but in this position, I think it's important to take a look at it. King g2 actually does draw after king takes f4. Uh, you have to go king to f1. Uh, and the idea is... If king f3 here, you have king e1, and black is out of moves and has to either go here. If you go here, king e2, and you're fine. King h3, king e3, king takes h4, king takes e4, and then uh, black cannot come to g3. Uh, so uh, king to g4, let's say, uh, and then uh, something like f4 or king to e3 uh, will draw the game. We can go ahead and work that line out, but... Uh, basically, after f4, uh, king to e3 has to be played. If king g3, I believe, is played, then f5. 
and h3 and we're gonna end up making queens at the same time but long story short uh the position should have been drawing uh towards the end there uh but after uh f3 here i'm just completely losing uh, I really thought I was going to be losing regardless because his king is starting to enter. Uh, but I already knew I was in seriously bad shape because of the time situation. Uh, but unfortunately, I dropped this game and uh, I'm looking to rebound in the next one. But I think overall it was a relatively good game. I had a nice advantage throughout and then uh, it was just poor time management at the end kind of caught up to caught up to me. Uh, it's about time that that happened because I've had some serious time issues in some of these games. But uh, overall, not a terrible game, uh, and I'm uh, looking to bounce back in the next one. And I will see you guys in the next video.